Hey, what's up everybody? What if I told you that there is one of the masterminds behind the beauty, grace, and elegance of Royal Kingdom Estates that maybe some of you guys may not have met before? Well, I'm going to be interviewing the man today. It is going to be jam-packed full of a lots of a lot of information and just an overall wonderful conversation. So sit back, relax, and let me take you for a ride. guys I am sitting here with one of the coolest guys around I am just so honored to be working with him he is part of the Royal Kingdom Estate family so please help me welcome Mr. Kelly to the show how are you I'm very well thank you very much that oh. was an amazing welcome oh no the pleasure is all mine so please can you share with us kind of what you do here at Royal Kingdom Estates what's your position um so my position is currently um the chaired you know the chair of the board of Royal Kingdom Estates that is uh, that has changed recently but prior to that I was the COO uh, chief operating officer okay. uh, for Royal Kingdom Estates yes oh wow yeah. so can you please t share with us kind of like what were the intricate details of your job like what did you do um so well being having the CEO being Danny Angels himself <laughs> uh so effectively we came into partnership uh towards the end of uh, 2019 uh, because of my, you know, my involvement within the real estate environment. Um, and then from then on, we, we develop a relationship that then led me to actually, you know, um, becoming their COO. Um, and effectively, I'll go into the history of that uh, later on, but effectively the role of the COO is more or less, um, you know, being responsible for the operations of the company. So as a CEO, he can't take off everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of my civil engineering background, uh, management background, uh, in the UK particularly, I was able to, you know, assist and support in, in actually having some effective uh, dialogue with all our customers overseas, mm -hmm. uh, because primarily we go about 70% of our customers in the US, Canada, and then, and then across Europe. Uh, right, so yeah, right. I've been yeah, working and coordinating uh, some of what we're doing. Uh, mm, yeah, for, okay. for, yeah, for the business. Yeah. Well, Cause it's so funny. I never like, knew about you. So it was almost kind of like you were a guy <laughs> behind the scenes. He was kind of like incognito. Yes. I did not know anything about you until recently. So it was so interesting. You're like you coming in, you're like, oh no, I've been around. I've yes, been yes, here. Yes, I've yes. been here for a little yeah. while. So kind of with your background, how have you applied that to Royal Kingdom Estates? You being a civil engineer and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So effectively, I think that's that's the main reason why we're we're, ha we're, we're having this uh, conversation. So that mm -hmm. those that actually come in physically to the office that do not physically see me here because I'm in and out, um, mm -hmm. will know some of what I do to, to support the business. So effectively, um, I'll give you a bit of a history. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I, I've been in the UK for 25 years. Mm -hmm. um, I primarily loved, you know, uh, Ghana um, <laughs> as a motherland. I enjoyed my time here um, and I, I, I went to the UK. Um, so I've been in the UK since uh, 1998. Oh wow! That's uh, and time. effectively, <laughs> when I uh, when I when I went to the UK, um, I wanted to get into construction. Uh, mm. That's always been my passion. Real estate has always been my passion. So mm -hmm. I went to the UK. I did a national diploma in construction. Uh, ideally, I wanted to go straight to university, but mm -hmm. the um, you know the grades that we had here uh, and the system we had it was a bit different. Right. So I had to do an equivalent course. So I did a national diploma in construction. Uh, and once I passed that, I then went into uh, work with a company. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to have a gap year before I went to university. Mm -hmm. uh, so I worked with them for a year. They really enjoyed my time with them. And as mm -hmm. a result of that, they decided that they wanted to keep me on full time. So I then did a, a building engineering degree. Mm -hmm. uh, so building engineering degree, I did it part time. So full time would be three years, but mm -hmm. I did it five years part time. So I was mm -hmm. working and studying mm -hmm. at the same time. And I think that was one of the greatest things I ever did. Wow. Right. Um, and the reason why I say that is I had a lot of when I was probably on my third year, mm -hmm. I had people that graduated because I had two more years to graduate. Mm -hmm. But the graduates that were coming into the business were being trained by myself. Right. Mm. Because even though I had partly got my qualification, mm -hmm. I had the practical experience on ground. Uh, right. But you've got a lot of graduates that come into the business, but they have no practical experience. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to construction, everything 
it's got to do with what you're building physically exactly. on the ground. The theory is mm. it's a great support and, 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 and a great you know help, uh, but what you want to do is to actually build something physical. So that's mm. been that's been my background, and that's what yeah wow. that's what I've been doing. So yeah, I had a privilege to you know work on some very bespoke. Uh, key projects in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, one of the key ones that I, I do talk about is King's Cross and Pancras Station. Uh, oh. We had a whole renovation of all of that. Uh, it had a mixture of both civil engineering and building engineering, mm -hmm. uh, and and all of those things were you know came together to shape my you know my my uh, my foundation as a building engineer, civil engineer. Yeah. Wow. I mean yeah. that that's an extensive background. It really is. Wow. I mean it's like a it's like a earful. I would say it's so interesting yeah. hearing you and kind of like your experience that yeah. you learned in the UK and now you're coming here to yeah. Ghana and applying that yeah. experience. Yeah. You know and now you're part of you know now you've been a part of Royal yeah. Kingdom Estates. So how did it start with you and Royal Kingdom Estates? Like how did you and Danny meet? What was the start okay. of all that? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I love Africa, mm -hmm. you know, I love the fact that, you know, I live in the UK mm -hmm. where you can drive through a street and all the houses look exactly the same, right? right. <laughs> but you come and visit Ghana and mm -hmm. you can see different, unique, you know, individual, you know, um, buildings that have yeah. character, they have, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, they're, and they're, they're amazing. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But again, there are times where you see you, you go through areas where you find out that they're not coordinated. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but my passion has been the built environment. So I wanted to actually have my own company in the UK. But I realized oh, that the okay. capital that I needed was mm -hmm. quite high. Um, mm -hmm. So I visited Ghana uh, maybe after third, uh, 16 years of being away mm -hmm. uh, and I had a culture shock. And I came oh, in here wow. and I said to myself, <laughs> I can never ever live in this country. It's like, you know, I, I think I'm stuck in the West. That's my mindset. Wow, really? Um, yeah. Mm. But my, my, my grandmother, um, you know, on my mom's side, mm -hmm. um, is, is, you know, who I loved so much. So I mm -hmm. kept visiting her every, every, every often. Mm -hmm. uh, so every year, every other year, I'll, I'll be coming down. And as I kept coming, I began to see the opportunity in real estate. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I then decided that, it, with a lot less capital, I can establish myself in the same kind of business that I want to do here. Right, so right. I then started looking for land. Mm. And then that's when I had my, you know, my setbacks, right? Oh, okay. So effectively, I bought acres of land in various places in Ghana mm -hmm. um, and then had a look at the land, make some down payments, you know, had a payment schedule, had an indenture, had everything in play. Mm -hmm. um, and I was very naive. And I go back yeah. to the UK and they say, OK, um, different stories. Now you're calling people back and not picking up. It then ended up having litigation of land mm -hmm. and all those kind of things. Money yeah. is stuck. Um, so I decided that, do you know what? And if I'm going to do this, I need to learn how to properly understand how it works in Ghana. So yeah. I began to learn the ropes of how to be able to actually acquire land and to own the land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You can pay for land, I pay for land, but I never own the land. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So um, in my plight in doing that, I was able to learn the ropes and I was able to acquire some land and I started some real estate projects. Mm -hmm. um, but then what I needed to do was to make sure that I had land available for my next project. Mm -hmm. So one of my friends in the US contacted me and said that there is this land available in Great City mm -hmm. uh, in near Iburi. I'm thinking, <laughs> wonderful, let's have a look. So mm -hmm. I thought, let's make an appointment and speak to Danny. Mm -hmm. So I spoke to Danny Angels. Uh, <laughs> we had a wonderful conversation. Mm -hmm. And in our conversation, I realized that amongst the multiple number of people I've dealt with, mm -hmm. when it comes to land purchase, he was the most, um, you know, well organized, yeah. right? I could tell he had a very good depth of knowledge. Mm -hmm. I could also tell that, you know, he had credible land because now I've been able to learn how to actually do all the assessments and checking and making sure that I can take possession. So now mm -hmm. I'm not naive, but then exactly. every document I needed, anything mm -hmm. I needed to verify, he had it in hand. He was able <laughs> to provide it to me. I was able to verify mm -hmm. and I was able to confirm that everything that he told me was exactly what was he, he you know what was like there was on the 10. exactly that's danny though absolutely really <laughs> absolutely so i then realized that do you know what are there people like this in ghana you know <laughs> given i mean mm -hmm. given a service that a lot of people in the diaspora desperately need mm -hmm. right so i've been in the uk now 25 years right and i've had so many stories of people that buy land 
mm. and they're losing it, right? Yeah. Um, and effectively, those that cannot stay around, they go back to the UK and then they, they're thinking, you know, am I going to be able to build? Am I maybe going to do this? And if they don't have people they can trust, exactly. even family. Right. And that's so unfortunate. It really, really is. And it that's sounds right. like that Danny was able to almost kind of like, he was kind of like that different, different kind of, you know, that's person right. than you felt really comfortable yes. and safe with him. Yes. So you decided to link up with him yeah. through that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it effectively, when you're looking at what Danny's doing, Danny is providing a service mm -hmm. that a lot of people in the diaspora particularly desperately need. Yeah. right um and effectively he's actually set out to be different from the mm -hmm. masses yeah right <laughs> um and therefore we we want to change the narrative so that then takes me back to what i wanted to do in terms of how we actually ended up partnering together mm -hmm. so i wanted to acquire about so he, he was uh, at that time they had about 200 acres of land at great city mm -hmm. uh, and i wanted to acquire about 40 to 50 acres of land Wow, and then lot. he said, well, people are coming here for two plus, five plus, mm. you know, maximum maybe 10 plus. In, who is this guy mm. coming <laughs> for, you know, you know, 40 acres, 50 acres of land. So I ended up in a meeting with him and we had a discussion. Uh, and I think he wanted to reject the idea. But the way mm. I came across, I thought he wanted to look a bit into detail. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to know how exactly I was going to market this land and exactly what I was going to do with it. So in our conversation and interaction, what we both realized that our vision was very identical wow what really? i really wanted to achieve in ghana mm -hmm. was exactly what he was already doing all right um and i think one of the things that people in diaspora also need to learn to do is partnership right mm -hmm. even though i had very, had some good experience here in ghana um i knew i needed somebody on the ground that was mm -hmm. well seasoned and i knew exactly what they were doing to support me to succeed, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So in those discussions, I then realized that he was the guy I needed. Wow. Right? Oh my um, goodness. And then I think he also saw some value mm -hmm. in what I could bring to the table with my background. Mm -hmm. So exactly. when he saw those values, we mm -hmm. then thought, why not partner together? Why, why not you know, <laughs> join together instead of you doing your thing, I'm doing my thing. Right. Uh, and then, yeah, instead of you taking the, uh, the you know, 50 acres, why not us put something together to get all 200 acres sold out right mm -hmm. so i then came up with a plan uh, and then we 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 got into in touch with uh you know uh, somebody that you know did a youtube videos and marketing mm -hmm. uh, he wasn't into the idea at that time mm -hmm. at all he, really he, absolutely <laughs> you know he wasn't he was he didn't he didn't actually you know grasp the that as a great opportunity in which we can actually utilize mm -hmm. to reach you know the um you know the demographic that we wanted to 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 market to mm -hmm. uh, but i convinced him and one thing that i really like about danny he takes notes mm -hmm. uh he ponders he reflects on it and then he comes out okay why not try this right so we did our first video for gray city mm -hmm. which i believe you all have seen oh yeah um yeah <laughs> and, and and that and that video was was great uh, and it, it did what we, we needed it to do at the time uh and that also brought in you know quite a number of customers which we're working with now uh and that became you know powerful model and that's why we've got our own channel and that's why we do what we do now oh wow right. what yeah. a story what yeah. a story it's so funny how the most High works things out and yes. how you know it all works for his plan and how that's you correct. guys were able to Absolutely. connect and like you said you guys had the most identical that's correct way of doing things correct, so yeah. and like you said partnership it's really really important that's right, you yeah. know so kind of with you being here now kind of like with you know the staff how yeah. are you thus far enjoying the staff of arcade um it's been amazing <laughs> it's been amazing obviously i've been working behind the scenes i've been getting so effectively you might you, you've been i mean everybody here has been doing bits and bots for me every right. now and then but they don't know i'm the one requesting it but because i'm <laughs> primarily not here i i actually work through desmond mm -hmm. and work through danny himself uh, in terms of the requests that i need for information mm -hmm. uh anything i need assessment on sites and everything else this morning the engineering team i've been working on that mm -hmm. uh, to give us that information uh again i i do a lot of customer facing for some of our clients you know in the diaspora right. uh, we had the zoom calls and everything else and i and they know my face mm -hmm. uh, but again the good thing is we don't all have to be here we got majority of our customers not living in ghana 
right? right? Exactly. And and yeah, COVID came <laughs> and COVID came with remote working. Yeah. So remotely, I've been working for economic states and, mm-hmm. and that's what I've been doing. The team here have been excellent. It was amazing having our own office. Uh, yeah. And I also watched the video of the three week, how we quickly put everything together uh, in order to, mm-hmm. you know, in order to establish, you know, what we have here. Um, you look at, um, you know, a remarkable development such as, you know, the decade, mm-hmm. right? Uh, which is where we have our, you know, um, our accommodation for people that visit uh, and effectively we're able to cater for their needs and they can come and they can see the excellency of what we've been able to put together, the color combination, the interior decoration, you know, the model of the house itself, having a swimming pool on the rooftop, you know, the kind of environment that you want people from the desk to come and enjoy. Right. So these are some of the things that, you know, we, we you know, we, we're able to achieve. Uh, and it's been great, you know, to see all of that come together. Um, again, I spent time in Danny's house. I was here when it was being built. Um, mm. And then looking at the recent video that we had, <laughs> um, you know, and it just, you know, we, we just have a mark of excellence, right? Yeah. Um, gone is a time where, you know, we get people building for us uh, and then you come and you walk in and you, you, you're you having to almost correct everything that's been done. Yeah, that's very, right. very true. Um, but when you have somebody like Danny Angels that's gone eye for detail, mm-hmm. right? You've got somebody like Desmond that is a great season engineer. Mm-hmm. Um, and you've got somebody like myself and we, we sit together and we review things and we discuss, you know, what we want to achieve, um, you know. So, and the, the great thing is we have something for everyone, yes. right? Um, so we got Gray City, mm-hmm. uh, we've got Black Star Village, uh, we've got The View, uh, we got all this, you know, wonderful land, um, and it all comes with different price ranges, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and some of the questions I've had other people ask me, oh, why is Danny building on, on a tiny plot of land? <laughs> I mean, you, you look at yeah. that, it tells you of what we can achieve, mm-hmm. right? Um, so there are some people that want to spend so much in the city, and all they want is a city. If you want a city, uh, and you can afford to buy a big piece of land, brilliant. Mm-hmm. But if you can't, Look at what we've done on a small piece of land. Everything is possible with Royal Kingdom Estate. Oh, I love that. Right? Everything is possible, guys, with Royal Kingdom Estate. Don't you forget that. So yes. how do you see yourself growing with the company? I, I, I class uh, this company now mm-hmm. as a small, medium-sized company, mm-hmm. right? But if you look at the vision that we have as a company, we are going places. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. We are going to be a brand name here in Ghana. Right? Mm-hmm. And effectively, there is nothing that you want to do within the real estate space that we cannot achieve. Right? Right. Danny's house demonstrates that. Yes, it right? does. The decade mm-hmm. demonstrates that. And there's a, a mirage of other projects that we've done that demonstrates the excellence of what we can achieve right Mm -hmm. and so if there are people out there that have not yet seen those videos go and watch that please and if you want credible people (laughs) that you can work with to bring you know to to get something as excellent and great as that to be done then this is a place to come right Uh, and one of the things that i think we want to do we want to be the one-stop shop where we can take the entire burden Mm -hmm. from the customer Right? right we can get you the land we can assist you in getting it registered we can build for you if you're here to live in it fantastic but if you want us to also let it and manage it for you we can also do that we can do all the maintenance work there is no aspect of the real estate field that we can do interior decoration help you selecting the design uh, the lighting you know the furniture that goes in there we have a myriad of people the windows the doors whether security doors, all of that is to demonstrate the, um, you know, the ability that we Mm -hmm. have as a company to actually, you know, deliver for our customers. So there is nothing within the space that we cannot do. And whatever they they require, we will step up to the plate. And what we, we, we intend or we always, you know, push ourselves to do is to achieve excellence or to beat the customer's imagination and do something beyond their imagination. Uh. There is nothing 
That's the limit to us. There's nothing. The sky's the limit, right? The sky's not even a limit. We go straight to the heavens. Right? We just go up to the heavens. Up to Spain, (laughs) maybe. Up to Uh, the heavens. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Well, thank you so much, Kelly, for, you know, coming on here, telling, you know, us your experience with Royal Kingdom Estates and you just almost being like one of the masterminds, you know? So I, I really appreciate you. Thank you so, so much. And I'm happy to be working with you now. No, it's a great pleasure. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I'm really, I want to say that, you know, being here with the staff, yourself, mm-hmm. um, you know, our camera team, mm-hmm. uh, the girls at the desk, um, you know, um, you know, we've got Alassan who is now, you know, in, in charge of admin, HR. Um, and we ha- had some training sessions uh, mm-hmm. and we've got another training session I want to have with the team before I leave. Mm-hmm. Uh, but all of these things are to just equip us so that we can be as effective as possible. Mm-hmm. And all we're doing is to meet a client's needs, to meet a customer's need. Uh, and we want to be the number one person that anyone thinks of when they think of real estate Ghana. When they think about land, they think about property, they think about interior decor, they think about, you know, real quality products. I want them to think Royal Kingdom mm-hmm. Estates. And that's what we are. I love it. I'm like getting excited just by just like talking to you. Awesome. It's getting me amped. It Absolutely. really is. So like Absolutely. I said, thank you so much for coming on the channel. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. And please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and please share this information with others. Until next time. Bye.